Welcome back, everybody, to X4 Foundations. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we are going to get our trading station all set up and ready to go. Uh, so I'm in the office here with Manager Desudris Zusilas Luligas the Eighth. But I, I I talked to Desudris, and we're just going to call him Desudris for short, or maybe her as the case may be. I'm not going to ask to you know look under the hood. Anyway, um, so I guess we'll assume Desudris is a him. We could assume Desudris is a her, actually. Okay, so she. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know how you, how you tell to a lot of females apart from males. Uh, maybe to a lot of females are brown and the males are green, perhaps. I don't know. Uh, that might be true in nature and in real life. So, yeah. Anyway, that's beside the point. That's not even important. I don't even know why we got off on that tangent. Okay, so anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to go into here and we're going to grab or right-click on our trading station, go to Logical Overview. And let's get this sucker set up. So let's start with drones first. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have 40 trade uh, or cargo drones. We're going to have 50 defense drones. And we're going to have 50 repair drones. And that will max us out to the uh, 140 drones. Okay. Uh, so we got that set up. And then the station will bring in components. It looks like we... Or you have drone components here. Not sure how that happened, but we do. Okay, uh, energy cells and smart chips, and they'll bring uh, the manager will take care of getting all that stuff in, so the drones can be um, manufactured and kept up. All right, now next we're going to uh, go ahead and select trade wares. Um, so it looks like we already have drone components selected. Uh, okay, so here, let's do this. Let's go to select tradewares. Now, here's the, here's what my plan is. We're going to sell everything from this trading station that makes sense in this region. So basically stuff that Talati uses, Parented uses, and Argon uses. We're not going to do Split, Terran, or Boron because none of that, you know, none of those races are in this area. Okay, so that means we want advanced composites, we want advanced electronics, antimatter cells, antimatter converters. We do not want Bofu, Bogas, Chelt Meats. We do want Claytronics. We do not want Computronic uh, Substrate because that's Terran. We already got the drone components selected because I was messing around earlier, so that's probably why that's selected. Energy cells, um, engine parts, field coils, food rations, graphene. We don't want any liquid slash gas or solid storage here because we didn't set that up. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys, but I am going to actually set up separate trading stations, which are essentially going to be depots. One of them is going to be dedicated to gas. The other will be dedicated to solids. And in doing so, what we can do then is assign miners to just those depots and then, you know, any other station that we build. So let's say we end up with 20 stations that need or, or, or you know, gases. Um, they can just buy from directly from the depot. And that means I only have to have one station that I've assigned miners to instead of 20 stations. Okay, so that's the idea behind that. That's the plan. Uh, but we can't put any gas or solid in this station because we only have container storage. And that is by design. All right, so we want hull parts. We don't want hydrogen ice. Uh, we want Maja dust, Maja snails. We are going to sell illegal goods because it makes money, and as long as it makes money, that makes it right. <laughs> Kids, don't listen to me if you're watching. That's not entirely true in real life, but in this game, it's true. Okay, um, so we want meat, medical supplies. We do not want metallic micro lattice because that's Terran. We don't want methane because that's gas. We want microchips, missile components. We do not want nevidium. We want nostrop oil. We don't want ore or plankton. We want plasma conductors. We don't want protection. This is used, I believe this is for tides of avarice, and I think it's some substance that you can use to help protect against the solar tides or something to that effect. Nevertheless, it does not apply to us right here and now, so we're not going to do anything with that. Protein paste is Terran. We want quantum tubes, refined metals, scanning arrays. We don't want scrap metal. Uh, I don't think, well, what the hell? Let's do scrap metal too. I don't, I don't know if it matters or not. We don't want scrap and fruit. We want shield components. We don't want silicon but or silicon carbide, but we do want silicon wafers. Smart ships, soybeans, soy husk, space fuel, space weed, spices, stimulants, sunrise flowers, superfluid, swamp plant, 
Solidionium. We don't want Terran MREs. We want dirt components. We want to, uh, no, we don't want water. We want weapon components, uh, weapon components rather, and wheat. Okay, so that is everything we're gonna sell at this station. This station is missing storage of this type. Okay, so uh, I bet you scrap metal. I wonder if scrap metal is considered a solid. I'll bet you it, it is. Okay, so let's remove that, and that takes care of that issue. Okay, cool. All right, now here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off like so, and then, then I'm going to adjust this as time goes on. So we're going to go to Advanced Composites, which is our first commodity. We're going to create a buy offer, and we're going to remove automatic pricing. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the buy amount to approximately one third of the price range. Okay. Then we're going to go to create sell offer and we're going to create, we're going to remove automatic pricing and we're going to create a sell amount to approximately two thirds of the price range for this commodity. Okay. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go through each commodity and I'm going to set the same thing. So one third buy, two thirds sell. Then what we're going to do is we're going to let some time pass and we're going to start observing and looking at what product is moving versus what product may not be moving. All right, guys, I am back and, um, let's just say some mistakes were made. <laughs> so, oh boy, I got lots to catch up on. So let's start with, uh, the trading station here. It is finally working and uh, making us some money. Um, what happened is that I set up the, the pricing and then I, 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 I just sat here and ran set up for a while. And I noticed no, nobody was coming to the station. I mean, not a single ship. And I'm thinking, oh, that's weird. Uh, so I went in and I adjusted the the sell price uh, down a little bit. Um, and same thing, ran set it for a few minutes. Not a single single AI showed up. So I so then I set it to automatic pricing, with again the same result. And I'm going, what in the heck's going on here? Uh, come to find out um, through some trial and error, and just you know trying to try to pay attention to what's going on here is I was looking at the information for the trading station and I noticed under here where it says use global setting, it had my Reaver Industries exclusive trade rule set, which is not what I intended to have happen. And so basically it was not allowing anybody um, to come to the station aside from, you know, my own ships. Oh, and by the way, my own ships were coming to the station and they were stocking it up and nobody was buying anything is what is what was going on there. And so... I took a look at the uh, global trade rule that I set up, and I actually set this rule up a long time ago, um, uh, the River Industries exclusive. Um, but I had I was looking at this just you know earlier, not not too long ago, and I noticed that these boxes over here were unchecked, and I assumed on incorrectly that, oh, I need to check these in order for this rule to apply to station trades, station supplies, sale of ships. So what I did was I checked those um, and then I confirmed the changes. What I did not notice in doing that is it then set a global default for station trades and station supply. I didn't notice that. It's not super obvious um, and, and didn't realize that that's what I was actually doing. I thought this meant you had to check it in order for it to, the rule to apply to trades and, and station supply. But what this is actually is, is this actually makes it global, right? This makes it a global default. And so uh, so I just happened to look over here and notice that this said Reaver Industries exclusive, which of course is not what I wanted it to do. Um, so when I went in and turned that back off, uh, let's see, Reaver Industries. So if, if remove those ticks there and then confirm changes, it removes that as the default rule. And then as soon as I did that, um, the AI just swarmed the station. It's like they went, whoop. <laughs> it was really funny. Uh, and then it, they started buying stuff up you know, like crazy. And then the station started making me money. Um, so, yeah, lesson learned there. It's just this game is can be so complex sometimes 
uh, and it's easy to you know to to miss things or in this particular case do it you know misunderstand what a setting does and it doesn't always give you a lot of feedback on that so anyway we figured that out and I, I'm smarter now than I was before and so anyway what I did then is I went back into the station and adjusted the prices back to the original manual setting that I had which is about one-third by two-thirds sell and after I did that I wasn't getting much action at all um, and and I got to think and I go you know what though the thing is is even if I was able to adjust these prices um, and get them going perfectly the economy's still going to change and so what works now might not work in five hours from now um, so I decided you know what screw it I'm just going to go with automatic sell pricing um, and even automatic buy pricing on stuff that I'm not providing myself and just let the manager handle it because after all that's what they're for um, and so the station is doing pretty well I am making definitely making money off of it if we take a look at the transaction log you can see here um, that this bar is going up and up and up and and uh, yeah so we're, we're making lots of money um, the uh, in oh, okay yeah so sorry uh, so we got that going so I want to just talk about a couple things here um, so what I have done here is I've set up a few different things so for anything that is not being produced by me uh, by my my reaver industries headquarters such as the maja dust and snails and the nostrop oil and the soya beans and soya husk and the space fuel and all that kind of stuff i basically just have that set to automatic pricing both for buying and selling um and i also have have it set to sell everything basically so we'll sell all but one because I have no reason to keep a reserve of these things in the station I just want to move them through the station um, so things that I do want to keep a reserve on however like advanced electronics claytronics drone components engine parts field coils etc stuff that I need for building you know uh, new stations and ships and whatnot uh, I do have a reservation set or uh, so that it always keeps a certain amount. So, for example, with field coils, um, I well, I've done two things. I, I'm giving it a lot more storage than the than the automatic will do. So I'm saying I want to have 12,500 of this product, and I want you to always keep 7,500 on hand because, you know, I'm going to have to come and grab this stuff and use it when I'm building things. So anything over and above 7,500, go ahead and sell. Now, as far as the pricing goes, for buying, I will buy any of this product from anyone that wants to sell it to me, but at the very rock bottom price, okay? 95% of the time, I'm buying it only from my own station, uh, Reaver Industries headquarters. But occasionally, I will actually have an, um, the AI come in and, and sell me a product at, at the lowest possible price, which is fine with me. If they want to sell it at the lowest possible price, then great, let's do it. Um, and then for the buy offers, again, I decided to, to just use automatic pricing so that way the manager can adjust that according to what the market's doing. I don't want to take the time to sit here and do that manually. Um, I know a lot of people like to do that in this game. I don't. It, well, it's not even so much that I don't like to do it. It's just that I've got so many other things that I also want to do that I can't sit here you know, for two hours and try and fine tune and tweak these prices just for them to change again in five hours from now kind of thing. Okay. So I'm just going to let the manager handle all that. And it's working. I might not be making as much money as I potentially could, but I'm making money and it's working and everything's cool. Okay. So, um, what's this? There's not enough storage allocated for this where, yeah, I don't know why it's, this is happening. I'm, I've told it to, uh, to store 50,000 units of this and it only has 30,000. Um, uh, no, I, and I'm telling it to keep 30,000 and store 50,000. I don't know why it's saying there's not enough room because I don't have automatic storage allocation enabled. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. Um, but everything else seems to be working there. And we have plenty of space. I'm, not, I'm only using about maybe 45% of the overall storage space currently anyways with the trading station. Okay, a couple things I want to show you about Reaver Industries headquarters. Uh, so I've made some changes here too. Uh, basically, what I've done with Reaver Industries headquarters is... Um, actually, let's go back here for a second. Um, I have intentionally set Reaver Industries at the station level 
to be exclusive and not to sell to the public anymore, with one exception, and that exception is uh, that exception is energy cells. We've got so many energy cells coming out of our ears that I am allowing the AI to to purchase or to buy energy cells directly from River Industries headquarters because I just you know I have so many of them. I'm and I'm selling them at the at the rock bottom price. Uh, well, I'm using automatic pricing, but it never changes because, you know, it, there's just so much of it. And remember, this is being generated for free. So it, 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 this is 100% profit anytime I, I sell this stuff. Okay. Everything else, however, is only selling to my ships, um, to Reaver Industries. And so uh, right now, I was asked to drop my car. Oh, hold on. Let's see who this is. This is one of our Hermes Vanguard haulers, and he is, or she, as the case may be, in Grand Exchange 1. Uh, so what we're going to do is grab our Dragon Patrol and go after... Who is attacking you? You know, I, I set the color filter on because it, it looks not kind of neat, but it kind of makes it a little more difficult to tell sometimes who the bad guy is here. Usually I can spot him, but uh, I'm not seeing him right at the moment. Here, let's do this. Let's go into the filter. And turn that on. Okay, here he is right here. The Minotaur. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to tell the Dragon Fleet to eliminate that mofo. And you are fleeing, so hopefully you can get away uh, before he gets to you. Let's put this back on because I like it. It's cool. Yeah, it looks like he's going to dock at the refinery and get away. Uh, I have lost a few of my Hermes Vanguards, and I'm not replacing them because they're, you know, they were my earlier trading ships. I think what I'm going to move for medium class ships. I'm going to keep my auto traders in the Cormorant, but for station traders, I'm going to go back to the Vulture with, um, you know, fighters to protect them. Okay, so anyway, the dragon should be on his way over to, to show that dude the error of his ways. So let's let that do its thing. All right, back to Reaver Industries headquarters. So, so yeah, basically what I've done here is um, everything now is only selling to Reaver Industries. So I've got some ships that are hauling, uh, that are picking up excess wares here and taking it to the trading station and selling it um, at rock bottom price. Uh, because it doesn't matter in the end, it's it's still my company, so it it's a wash as far as that goes. And then I have some ships working for the trading station that will also come here and sometimes buy excess if they're not selling something. So it seems to be working out pretty good overall. Uh, we have a backlog, however, of these intermediate products here. And... Um, Ex with the exception of the scanning arrays and plasma conductors, we have a backlog of quite a bit of this stuff too. Um, and I might need to, I might need to get some more ships assigned to, to move this product because it's, it's selling quickly and it's getting kind of backed up here. The other thing too, is I I'm letting Hurilis Hurilis, my five star manager decide um, how much to, where's this at? to store container automatically allocate capacity yeah automatic storage allocation i'm letting him decide how much to keep to make sure that we have enough to produce our end products but if if, if this continues to be backlogged like it is i think the first the first thing i need to do is is um put some more ships on here to see if we can move the product more quickly if it still continues to stay backlogged then i might have to manually um go back to manually adjusting this 
so, because he might be keeping more of this stuff than he really needs to. Um, so yeah, that's where we're going uh, or how we're doing here. It, we're really uh, producing like field coils and antimatter converters like crazy. And, you know, the ships are moving that to this trading station, but it's just, you know, this is producing faster than they can move the product. So that means we either need more ships or we need to make some adjustments here. But I'll worry about that later. I'll do that kind of thing off camera. Okay, so hopefully that brings you guys up to date on how we're doing in terms of our new trading station. I'm overall, I'm pretty pleased with how well it is working. And um, yeah, so let's see here. Right now it's, let's go back to here. So right now it's got 22.8 million um, in the station and it only wants 6.5 million at the moment. So let's accept that estimate. And then that brings our wallet up to two, 221 million and change. And yeah, that's pretty good. So it is definitely making us some money and it's great. Um, all right. I think that's going to wrap things up guys for this episode. So the, so the plan for the next episode is we're going to set up our administration station and that will then allow us to claim Nopaleos fortune six. As far as our fleet goes, I just have it hanging out at the moment up here in two grand. I, I, I did have it guarding the gate for a while but what was happening was you know i was losing a lot of fighters and having to replace them because i wasn't able to ma manage that i was focusing on the building and getting stuff set up so i decided all right screw that i just pulled the fleet back and just have it hanging out at this defense station here until i'm ready to do it um because you know i i don't i don't want to keep losing fighters of course it gets expensive um as far as the xenon encroachment they are setting up uh, a station here in Litany of Fury, but I don't really care. I'm going to let them have Litany of Fury because there's there's no point in defending it. We are definitely going to hold them at bay, though, when they if if and when they start to try and come into Wretched Skies 10. From that end, um, they really, really like Family Zen, and so I'm keeping a close eye on this, and if I see them start to put a station down in Zen uh, or up here in Crit then I, I just, you know, tell the fleet to go over there and wipe it out real quick. And yeah, I think that's gets us caught up. So I, I, my plan is for the next episode to continue doing some more building. So probably maybe in two ish episodes from now, we'll jump back in the fleet and take them over here and, and attack fires defeat and try and push them out of fires of defeat and Tharka's ravine 24. So that is the plan stand. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share off the video. We'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.